Good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Thursday the 15th of September. I hope that you're well. Thank you for joining me. As always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. And in addition, in this time of national mourning, we uh, change and adapt and some of those prayers. So we begin in prayer. Blessed are you, creator of all things. The heavens adore you. Let the whole earth worship you. Let all peoples proclaim you. Let all nations obey you. Let us serve you in love and in peace. Come, Lord, and rule. Come into our hearts and fill them with love. Come into our minds and fill them with peace. Come into our lives and fill them with light. Come into our days and fill them with glory. Come, Lord, and rule. A prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious God, we give thanks for the life of your servant, Queen Elizabeth, for her faith and her dedication to duty. Bless our nation as we mourn her death, and may her example continue to inspire us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The psalm is Psalm 145. Your faithful servants bless you. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name for ever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendour of your majesty and all your marvellous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his compassion is over all his works. Your faithful servants bless you. And today we return to the book of Acts and we've reached Acts chapter 12. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak round you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself and they went through it. When they'd walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance and a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognised Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter's at the door. You're out of them, aren't your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said, it must be his angel. But Peter kept on knocking and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers and sisters about this, he said, and then he left for another place. Fantastic story and encounter in the early days of the church. So let me read the Reverend Rachel Mann's reflection. She says, we've all heard the phrase God moves in a mysterious way. We come face to face with its truth here in the contrasting fortunes of two of Jesus' original disciples. Peter seems, to use a modern phrase, Teflon-coated. He's briefly imprisoned and then led to safety by an angel. His chains fall off. James's fate is captured in one sentence. 
Herod has him put to death by the sword. I find the simple statement of James's death filled with a kind of pathos. This is the brother of John, who in Mark's Gospel is called with his brother a son of thunder. He, along with Peter and John, is chosen to witness the transfiguration. He's arguably one of Jesus' inner circle, set aside for great things. It's one of the mysteries of life why some things have long lives, why some have long lives and some lives are cut short. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought this truth into even sharper focus. We all know people for whom fervent prayer has been offered up, especially when ill, and still they have died. We've known others who against the odds have survived. This mystery may lead us to conclude that God is capricious or unjust, which is understandable but not in my view correct. James, Peter, you and I, we all have our time on earth and each of us is invited to respond to God's gift of life. None of us knows the time of our departure. What we can do is seek to be like James and Peter and live in the fullness of the Spirit. It's a good reminder, isn't it? We don't have any say, so we must live as best we can day by day. And so we turn to prayer. This is the collect for this week. Almighty God, you search us and know us. May we rely on you in strength and rest on you in weakness now and in all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord. God of love, we thank you for the life of the Queen, for her service to our nation and for her faith. Be close to all of us who mourn that we may find comfort and hope in your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Everlasting God, we pray for our new King. Bless his reign and the life of our nation. Help us to work together so truth and justice, harmony and fairness flourish among us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And on this day of the week when the focus for prayer is community, we pray for the community of Purton and the particular street that's our focus of prayer this week. Loving God, we thank you for the community of Purton, for all who live here, all who work here, all who serve the community in myriad ways. We pray for residents of all ages, from the youngest to the oldest, those in toddler groups, nurseries and preschool groups, those in our three school communities and all who work in them, the residents of Courses Court Retirement Complex and Purton Manor Nursing Home, and those of all ages in between. We pray for our PCSOs and our local councillors, for those who work at the two doctor surgeries, the pharmacy and dentists, for community leaders, church leaders, those who work in the library, shops and pubs, for all who help create our community, who volunteer and help others. And this week we pray especially for the residents of Idonia Road, asking for your blessing, peace and protection for those who live in each home. May they know they are loved by you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end and at my departing. Lord, be with us to guide us, within us to strengthen us, without us to protect us, above us to raise us, beneath us to uphold us, before us to lead us, behind us to guide us, ever about us this day and evermore. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me again for prayer today. Um, I hope that you have a good day and we'll be back here for prayer tomorrow at 9.45. Until then, take care. God bless. Bye for now.